And it was confirmed yesterday that the Everton boss, Carlo Ancelotti, would be leaving the club and making a return to Real Madrid for a second spell. The Italian came to Everton in December 2019 as Marco Silva's replacement, and they were second in the Premier League on Boxing Day. But they finished 10th after a tough second half of the season. The Daily Mail's Merseyside correspondent Dom King told TalkSport Breakfast earlier this morning that some toffee, f- toffee fans even... I don't know why I was going with that. <laughs> Toffee fans are happy to see the back of the Italian. No one knows who, who it's going to be. They're going to have to act, move very, very swiftly. And this appointment for Everton is absolutely huge oh, yeah. because this is there's been so much upheaval in, in the, the five years since um, Farhad Mashiri has, has been the, the club's major shareholder. And they've gone from one one kind of manager to another to another. You just want to see Everton now have a, have a proper plan in place where if, if it means that the, the next season has to sort of be, you know, you know rebuilding and restructuring before you can really make progress, um, it, it just has to be smart this time. Mm, they, yeah. they, can't, they can't afford any more mistakes. So uh, he was in charge, what, for a year and a half uh, overall mm. at uh, Everton. Cass, what, what do you make of the job that he did there? Oh, well, if you look at the back end of this season, their form was nearly relegation form. But if you look at the start of the season, they were challenging for the top. You know, you've got a guy, if you just look at his CV, it's extraordinary who he's managed. From whether Milan, it's been Juve, it's been PSG, it's been Real Madrid <laughs> twice, Napoli. You know, I think Regina would probably be his smallest club when he first started management. Uh, you know, the guy has been at the top level. Bayern Munich, I've even forgot Bayern Munich. And by the way, I forgot <laughs> Chelsea as well. <laughs> you know, the, the guy's managed some of the biggest clubs in world football. And had success at these clubs. So it is a big loss. Maybe he got lost a little bit within the project. I don't know. Because he brought in, obviously, Rodriguez. James Rodriguez came in and, and a wonderful left foot, a certain age, but would have come in at quite a price. I, I'd like to think that he'd, he'd shown that there, there could be a pro- progression mm. at, at Everton. It just petered off with the depth of their squad because they mm. didn't have, you know a squad that they could bring in players from the sidelines if someone got injured. They paid a little bit of a price for that as well. Retrospectively, if you actually look at his managerial career, Andros, he's he's not stuck around at clubs for mm. very long. Bar, bar Milan, where I think he was at them for, for eight years. Everywhere else, it's been a year and a half, two year stint. So in some ways, you can we can now sit here and think, well, we shouldn't be yeah. surprised that he's left. But it is a surprise in some ways to some Evertonians because they'll be thinking, well, you've sold us a dream. You told us you were going to get us into Europe. Yeah. And it's not quite nearly, that way. Nearly did. Yeah, yeah, I think Everton have been trying the last four or five years to try and break into that top six. It's Listen, it's not easy. Um, they've maybe had the wrong appointment, bought the wrong players, spent a lot of money. Started season slow and then back end of the season almost getting into Europe. But with Angelotti, you have a proven manager. He spent well. They started fast. It's just unfortunate they tailed off towards the end of the season. But I think he took them closer to where they wanted to be. And I think in his mind, he came to Everton for a five-year project, which he hasn't really had since AC Milan. But like I said before, unfortunately, when a club the size of Real Madrid come calling you'd be silly not to not to take it. Mm. And going back onto a conversation I I had with you earlier on, we were talking about signing for a manager, for example, mm. and you alluded to some of the players he brought in this summer mm. with Hamas Rodriguez, a player we know that he loves and has brought to a, a number of clubs. Um, you've also got Alan and Decore. Mm. How how would you be feeling right now if you're some of those yeah, players? I didn't, actually, in? I didn't actually think about that. I, th- I think Alan and Decore would be okay. I think Hamas Rodriguez... He, he came to Everton for, for Angelotti. He was his guy. So, yeah, he'll probably be feeling, I don't know, maybe that he wants to leave as well. He, he's feeling he didn't really have the greatest the second half of the season. He started on fire and then tailed off. So maybe he's thinking, my manager's yeah. gone. Maybe I'm going to call some fuss and get myself out as well. So, yeah, yeah I didn't think about that, but that's an interesting point. Hamas Rodriguez got injured as well, didn't he? Mm. he, he during the course of the season, because like Andrus had touched on, the first part of the season, his left mm. foot was just a wand. Mm. You know, the amount of times I saw Dinya make a run down the left <laughs> yeah. and Hamas Rodriguez yeah. is feeding him straight away with a diagonal ball. He did that brilliantly. Calvert-Lewin certainly profited from some of the passes he made and others. Richarlison... It nearly worked. You know, we touched on it earlier. They were nearly in Europe. They nearly made the Champions League. They had an opportunity. I just think they didn't have the squad, the depth of the squad, just to get over the line. I always felt them games in a hand, hand, what they had, 
I didn't think they were mm. going to get the points to get them. I thought they were paying a price in the second part of the season. Okay. Look, you lose to Sheffield United at home, and then, you know, who were obviously relegated in the final home game at Goodison. Yeah. It just sort of finished their season for me. I think ultimately it all boils down to 90 minutes away from Europe. If they beat Man City, they would have been in Europe, they would have been seventh. So. Well, Sheffield United at home. Yeah. You know, like the last, yeah. you know, yeah. you beat them, they're in Europe. They were so close, and I so know close. Angelotti would have been speaking with the owners. Um, over the last few weeks to, to try and get them over that last step try and get them into Europe but unfortunately um, we, we won't see how that turns out uh, It's fair to say Paul on the Wirral <laughs> is perhaps happy with this news he says good riddance to Ancelotti absolutely awful season people are blinded by his CV mm. goes on to say wow. a decent Sunday league manager would have got more out of that squad <laughs> I'm that's, about ridiculously, that, Paul, <laughs> that's ridiculously harsh that just is you so, know you can't you know if you're going back to when they were second in the table and they were flying, mm. you know, all you, you know, rightly so, giving them a lot of credit for how they played, the way went their their business. Uh, yes, it did end badly the second part of the season, but I, I just keep going back to, I just didn't think they had a big enough squad to be able to handle some injuries. And so many managers have tried, like you said, they've had a, a lot of managers in the last few years, and none of them have been able to get everything in Europe. I think Ancelotti probably points wise was the closest out of the lot of them. I know. Um, with an extra year of experience in the Premier League and know how he would have assembled a squad to get them there if he was there next season. Well, let's let's take it this way. If we're going, his signings, his major one, Alan. I think Alan's mm. done really well. Decore, I think Decore's yeah. done really well. Um, then you could go Rodriguez. Well, I'd say probably mixed, but some great periods. Uh, you know, before well, he Christmas... Hit the ground running, yeah. didn't he? Before yeah. Christmas, we were, you know, all waxing lyrical about how good he'd been. Yeah. It wasn't the case in the second half. So, if, you know, if you have two out of your three signings and one of them didn't do that bad, he certainly would improve the team. I'd still say Hammers was a successful signing for them. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, yeah, a glass half full on him as well, yeah. So in terms of who then comes in to replace him, this is what Gaz Dimmick has, has said on Twitter, who is a, a Manchester United fan, but he thinks Everton should give, give Duncan Ferguson the job full-time. He says he did a good job as caretaker. He's loved and respected by the club and fans and players and has a good reputation as a coach there. Oh, you're, you're grimacing. No, <laughs> no, no. I'm just thinking, I, I happen, unfortunately, to play against Duncan when he made his debut for Dundee United against Celtic <laughs> and he pretty much scared me he was an 18 year old <laughs> I think he'd scare a few in the dressing room maybe that's what the modern player needs <laughs> yeah. but they, there has been that talk of him having a good relationship with Dominic Calvert-Lewin mm. and being helpful to him so far in his career um, we've seen him have that caretaker spell in charge and he did a really good job before yeah. uh, Carlo Ancelotti came in well he did what Evertonians wanted yes they wanted a certain way of playing they got things in the box quickly they you know Calvert-Lewin profited from that I think his goal tally started pretty quickly and yes Duncan for me got the maximum amount of what that team needed to do the change mm. they needed to make so does a Duncan Ferguson make sense to you Andros or is there somebody else that they should be thinking uh, of I think whoever it is, it needs to be a five-year project, it needs to be a plan. They need to um, basically assemble a squad that can uh, challenge the top six. For me, if I'm looking at it, I, I think Eddie Howe would be perfect. Um, I know reading on Twitter last night, it's not somebody the fans want, but you have to kind of forget <laughs> the last f two or three months where uh, Bournemouth got relegated after COVID and everything was up in the air. He had an incredible spell at Bournemouth, took him from either League One or League mm. Two up until the Premier League, uh, playing a very exciting brand of football. So if he had that, what he did at Bournemouth, if he had that with Everton, the resources and the squad they have, for me, um, he'd be the best man to get them where they want to be. See, what's pretty incredible, if you take the top t 10 teams in the Premier League, you're guaranteed nearly half of them will get sacked. <laughs> Guaranteed, because like Everton coming yeah. eight for yeah. the, you know, I know he's left, he's, he's made that decision, but that's what it is. If you're part of the top six, probably the two that don't make the, yeah. the Champions League yeah. spots can lose their job, like Jose did at Spurs. You know, that, I mean, Arteta has survived purely because yeah. they won the FA Cup and the very young manager, but mm -hmm. generally, and the pandemic at throwing to the mix. Yeah. Most managers will lose their job. If, you know, in a, if you're a top six team and you don't make the Champions League, yeah. you're probably going to lose your job. I, I think that's that's the problem now in the Premier League. Maybe five, ten years ago, everyone knew who the top four was going to be. Yeah. Now you've got two big clubs, Spurs and Arsenal, both missing out on the Champions League the last few years. Hmm. Very quickly, though, just going back onto Eddie Howe. Now, if if we are to believe rumours, mm. he's a boyhood Everton fan. Could that be? <laughs> could that though be? I know it sounds silly, but could that be a problem? Because could you become too emotionally invested in something? Um, Do you know what I mean? No, I don't think so. I think that would 
probably he'd probably more understand the club and what the club stands for. He'd, he'd listen to the fans. He'd hear what they want. Mm. With him being one of them, and I think you, you touched on Duncan Ferguson before. Yeah. He's obviously a big Evertonian and he had a successful spell there. So I don't think that would count against him. And also he had that Bournemouth, didn't he? He had a massive emotional contact with Bournemouth and he never let that get How many clubs did he support? <laughs> no, I don't mean support, <laughs> yeah, no, but he had that yeah, emotional... Yeah. Well, you know, he, he a... had his Premier League club and then he had his lower <laughs> league club, obviously. <laughs> oh, it's, it'll be interesting to see then what happens with Everton. Just to say, Dom, who's an Everton fan, he's been in touch. Uh, he says, had we won two or three games, as you've both pointed out, at home, we could have been top four. So I'm not going to criticise Ancelotti too much for that but this was the first time he says Everton fans had trust in the manager to see it through the tough period and this hurts and that's what I think is for those that are upset about all of it is that they believed in Ancelotti they believed in the project that he had sort of sold them and it hasn't worked that way remember when you walk away you're going to get a lot of stick like Brendan Rodgers left Celtic you walk nah, away. I, th- I think it, I think it's different. We're talking <laughs> about Real, we're talking about Real Madrid. No, I'm talking yeah. about fans, oh, okay. not from the general. Yeah, you know, yeah, from yeah. our perception, it's, of course you're yeah. going to take that job. Sure, well, yeah, but it's very interesting quickly on that because before he's moved to Real Madrid, do you remember he was very critical of the ESL and saying, you know, <laughs> they they didn't in, they didn't yeah. speak to the, the to the fans, they didn't inquire about all this sort of stuff, and now he's going to one of the clubs who still wants to be a part of the ESL. <laughs> so I wonder if Carlo Ancelotti's take on that might have to change now he's gone back to Spain. Anyway, this is Talksport Breakfast with Andros Townsend, Con- Tony Cascarino and Natalie Sawyer. Talksport Breakfast with Laura Woods, Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker. Talk sport.